60% of the movie was shot on the RED camera and the rest was shot on the Sony EX1 uh, and some JVC prosumer cameras. Uh, and this shot in particular um, consisted of the alien, of the uh, stand-ins walking around uh, and we were responsible of kind of painting them out and cleaning up the scene before we can comp in the, the CG aliens. So over here I have a, a nuke script, which is the script that we use to paint them out. Uh, and basically it's, it's using Nuke's uh, 3D capabilities uh, to, uh, to map it on. And what we did was we basically tracked it uh, using a, a combination of PF Track and Buju, uh, and then simply exported that camera into Nuke and started to uh, you know, work on our clean plate uh, process. Uh, and essentially in Nuke it's quite simple, it's just a, a plate uh, and the camera projections happening on the plate and uh, you start off with uh, just loading up here and then you basically have your, the beginnings of a clean plate for, uh, for the cleanup. And if I view the, the shot here, whoops, uh, you can see it's, you know, kind of plays out like so. So from there, you, we ended up having a, a clean plate that looked like this. So once we had the clean plate, uh, all our animation was done in Maya. Uh, we did a combination of uh, rotomation and keyframe animation uh, and some uh, motion capture work as well. Uh, so most of that was done in Maya and we rendered it out we, using 3D Delight uh, as our program uh, and uh, lit and then comped in Nuke and uh, you know you have a, a final shot that kind of looks like this. So we had 311 shots to, to comp and complete uh, for the show. Uh, and this was basically the general kind of pipeline we used to do the clean plate work. Uh, and then from there, we went on to comping the alien. Um, basically, the approach at Image Engine uh, was to, um, we rendered out everything out as 16-bit uh, float passes, EXRs. Uh, and we decided to render out all the passes as individual AOVs uh, from 3D to light. So we have something like the beauty pass here, we have uh, uh, diffuse, <clears throat> color passes, and basically in Nuke we created a, a script, a template, where the artists can kind of import this template into Nuke and just replace it with their, with their shots, uh, with their scene renders. So this is basically uh, an example of one of the scripts here and I can show you the, uh, the quick time of, of the final shot over here. So basically here's the shot. So this is basically the shot. Uh, this was shot on the Sony EX1 uh, and I can show you the original plate which looked something like this over here. So we had, uh, this was Jason, one of the main actors uh, that were doing the stand-in work. Um, so this is what was shot with us on the EX1, cleaned it out and then put the alien guy onto it. Uh, so from there, we can go on to showing some of the cool tools that we developed at Image Engine uh, and how they kind of played an important role to help the compositors comp the shots and make things a little, a little easier for us. So here we have another shot of an alien uh, hanging around. So this is the beauty pass here. Uh, and we also rendered out some usual layers. We had rendered out a normal pass, an ST or a UV pass, uh, and an interesting pass called the position pass. Uh, and basically what the position pass is, is uh, it's a floating point image where each pixel of the image represents an X, Y, Z coordinate in world space. So uh, uh, this particular pass uh, basically has points on it which says where it lands in world space. Uh, and I thought it'd be kind of cool to kind of uh, use this pass and, and develop it. And our, our lead uh, R&D programmer, John Hatton, uh, developed a tool called the Point Cloud tool. And basically, it's using the position pass uh, and our beauty pass. You can click on that and view it in Nuke. It kind of just shows the power of Nuke. And we have a 3D representation of, uh, of our alien. So this isn't, any, this isn't geometry or an FBX or uh, an OBJ file. It's actually just a point cloud system used from the position pass here uh, and the beauty pass to kind of map it onto. So it's a really cool way to get, uh, you know, uh, the world space uh, equivalent of the model in Nuke. Uh, and it really interested me in how we could use this and develop it further. 
And something we really want to push uh, quite a bit, uh, which I really like to do, is to get more of the lighting side happening in Nuke and have the compositors start to light shots a bit more and tweak things uh, a bit more. So we had our point cloud system and we also had you know, Nuke standard point lights which kind of interact with uh, the point cloud quite well. Uh, and again, John wrote this really interesting program called the Relight Tool which takes in the position, the UV pass and the normal pass. And we are starting to get into shader development which I think is another interesting thing that's happening in compositing. So one shader that we uh, thought we'd write is one on specular because the director usually calls to make the alien more shiny and wet and you know the usual uh, the notes. So we made a little specular shader and we plugged it into our relight tool. And basically what that enabled us to do uh, is to start to uh, uh, relight the, uh, the alien in nuke. And if I split this up into two views and I view this as my 3D view here. And there's the alien. So there's my, my alien there, and here's my 3D representation. And it really helped the, the compositing artist to kind of a 3D representation of the alien and use the, the lights and nuke. And all of a sudden, what we could do is start to interact, you know, interact with this and get you know, a specular pass that the compositor could use. So if the director called for more spec uh, in a certain way, they didn't have to go back to 3D and back to the comp app uh, or the 3D application. We could do it all in, in Nuke. So it was really exciting to do that. And we have our little shader here that we could start to play around with, make it more shiny and you know, play with the colors if we wanted to change the colors and stuff like that. So that was sort of an interesting development. And we're developing more shaders that uh, we could use in Nuke to kind of take the burden off 3D a little bit. Uh, another pass that uh, was quite interesting is a uh, pass called the Preference Pass. I can close this. Uh, and this is sort of similar to the Position Pass, except the points are now stuck on the alien, so they travel along with them. So they're kind of points that are localized to the alien's body. Uh, and we developed another tool, uh, the R&D, uh, John wrote another tool called the Radial 3D Tool. And if I view that, it's got a couple of controls here. Uh, and basically what it allows me to do, uh, if I close this, uh, it likes, lets me pick a point on the alien's body and start to move things around. So I can kind of make things travel around. So you can see that. So basically we could use this to pick points on the alien and give, basically create mats for ourselves. So you can notice I have a point here selected. Uh, and then if I basically look at it here and scrub through the frames, uh, and I'm not doing any rotoing here, you can see that this kind of localized mat is moving around with the alien. So it's really cool to be able to pick parts of the alien and start to uh, create mats. The compositors can make their own mats and, and develop them as they went. So it's really cool. And then, you know, what we could do is a lot of the notes was to add more specular around the neck area. We could basically go ahead and kind of have the compositor add that in himself and kind of tweak the shot himself and play with the roughness and, and so forth. So it's a really cool way of uh, starting to integrate Nukes 3D along with you know, the render passes and really coming up with a, a quick look.